the liver. Continue some more. Or part three, third page that we're doing in the liver. Okay, so go ahead and draw your liver. You should be getting good at it by now. And then we'll talk about some, oh, do we get blurry? Okay. Let's talk about some things about uh, lipoproteins and cholesterol. So uh, a lipoprotein has um, lipid and protein. So go ahead and highlight part of the word with blue protein, and then the fat part, the lipid part, in yellow. And then we're going to draw some different kinds, okay? So make a bunch of circles like this. Okay, so that would be the protein part of a lipoprotein. So the protein part of a lipoprotein makes it soluble in the blood, and that's why we need it. Okay, so these lipoproteins are made by the liver, and they hold lipids in them. I'm going to draw some different examples. So here's one. Just a little bit. Okay, so hopefully you can see that some of those have more lipid in them compared to protein than others. So they have a lot of lipid in them. You might remember that oil is less dense than water, and similarly, uh, the more lipid you have in a lipoprotein, the lower its density. So this one would be a very low density lipoprotein, VLDL. And then maybe this one would be a low density lipoprotein, and maybe this one would be an intermediate density lipoprotein, and then maybe this would be a high density lipoprotein. So you see what makes them have the differences in names is how much lipid they carry. And by the way, there's all gradations in, of sizes here, and when you hear about blood tests, they just try to group them into these different groups to get an idea of how many of different kinds that someone might have. So the liver makes these and sends them out through its um, hepatic vein to go to the circulation. So what the liver does is the liver sends out cholesterol, which is a kind of lipid, and triglycerides. in lipoproteins. So if you finish a big meal um, and uh, you had a lot of carbohydrate in the meal, what will happen is that your liver will store some of that um, carbohydrate as a triglyceride within the liver itself, but then if it's filled up basically, then it will also send it out in very low density lipoproteins. So um, after a large carb meal, very low density lipoproteins are sent out to deliver triglycerides to uh, adipose tissue, where then it can be stored. So it goes out the hepatic vein, and then, you know, depending on how much lipid is added, it might be low-density lipoprotein, intermediate, but usually these are going to be the ones that are sent out. And it will go out to, um, then it's going to pass, uh, you know, through the heart, and then it's going to go through the arteries to the tissues that need it. and it dumps off 
a lot of lipid in the form of triglycerides and cholesterol. And then it comes back, so then it goes back to the circulation, but eventually um, as it's passing through the circulation each time, there will be um, eventually coming back around, and at this point um, there may be um, a combination of lipoproteins that return to the liver, and some of them might be high-density lipoproteins that were going through the circulation again, and you see they don't have very much, so they're capable of scouring, shall I say, or scavenging, scouring, picking up um, lipids that are stuck to blood vessels walls. At least that's the theory. And then it brings it back to the liver and drops off that lipid. Um, and then on the other hand, very low density lipoproteins appear to be more likely to lose lipid to vessel walls. So like they're so full, they're basically splitting at the seams and a little bit droplets of fat can come out and then stick to blood vessel walls. So this is where the idea that a high amount of high density lipoprotein is a, causes you to have a lower risk for heart disease and a high proportion of VLDLs and LDLs, maybe I'll do this too, are more likely to increase your risk of heart disease. But the jury is still out on it. It's a very confusing topic, and um, I'd be very cautious about just assuming that all VLDLs are bad or all HDLs are good, etc. It's a more complicated story than that. So because, though, that... Uh, it was so bought into that, oh, cholesterol must be bad, and cholesterol is packaged in these lipoproteins along with triglycerides, um, then uh, pharmaceutical companies made statins. And what statins do is inhibit a lipoprotein, or sorry, excuse me, cholesterol production by the liver. And since cholesterol is a key component in the uh, lipoproteins along with triglycerides, then by inhibiting cholesterol production by the liver, then presumably you would, your cholesterol would go down. Um, the problem is, is that the clinical trials are not really showing that statins are saving lives. Um, this video, I'm sure, is, you know, there's differing results that are coming out all the time, but so I'm going to try to keep it general. Um, what seems to be is that people that have had a previous heart attack benefit from statins. No previous heart attack there seems to be controversial clinical studies or uh, maybe we should say a lack of wowing like oh wow they're saving a lot of lives it doesn't appear to be the case and before someone takes a statin they might also then think well what are some of the side effects and sure enough we have some known side effects of taking a, a statin Amongst other things, I'm only going to point out a couple that particularly bother me if I were going to be prescribed a statin. One is that we know that they can damage the liver. It's a harsh chemical and can cause someone's liver function to actually decrease as a result of taking these medications. And we know that it can in some people, um, or so may, maybe I should put may, may increase risk of diabetes 
And as you know, diabetes is one of the um, biggest risk factors for heart disease. So if someone is trying to avoid heart disease and they take a statin when statins haven't even been clinically shown to be super effective, and then they get diabetes and diabetes is known to increase their risk of heart disease, it seems like um, maybe they, instead of taking uh, two steps forward, they've taken three steps back. Okay, so then let's talk about um, other jobs of the liver besides making uh, lipoproteins and much of the cholesterol that goes inside of them. The liver also, um, maybe I'll use a blue pen for this, make a white blood cell. And let's put the hepatic portal vein on here, which would be bringing... Um, ingredients from the intestines those ingredients pass through the liver and they have to deal with Kupfer cells Kupfer cells are a specialized white blood cells of the liver and ideally they will be able to um, prevent foodborne illnesses from going system-wide. And those pathogens could be worms, they could be bacteria, um, and they could be fungal things, any, any of the different kinds of pathogens, and viruses. There are um, three different kinds of viruses that are... Um, no, well known that in, infect the liver. I'm going to go down here for this. So those are hepatitis. These, so these are all viruses, not bacteria. Hepatitis A, B, and C. Hepatitis A is um, the least severe of the three, but all of them cause a, a problem with liver function. Hepatitis A tends to be more acute, meaning someone will get it and then they get better, rather than chronic, which would mean that they're dealing with it for a long, long time and it is passed by the oral fecal route. So someone has hepatitis and then um, they don't wash their hands very well and then they can pass it to someone else. Hepatitis B is harder to get and harder to get rid of. Um, and it is uh, carried in body fluids. So it's um, a sexually transmitted disease that can be spread by sexual contact um, and it also uh, could be a pass through the blood, so people might get it from tattoos or um, piercings or if they work in a medical field, maybe a needle prick seem to be the main ways that those are passed. And then uh, the third one, hepatitis C, is uh, only known to be passed um, through the blood, at least in um, the U.S. that we know of. and. It's mostly uh, IV drug users uh, or maybe from a blood transfusion if the uh, blood wasn't carefully screened for it. So those are three um, diseases of the, the liver. And then uh, last a thing I was going to put on this page is that the liver stores lots of vitamins for us. So when we pick a different color we haven't used, maybe orange. It stores our fat-soluble vitamins. Those would include A, D, E, and K. Uh, K is important in blood clotting in particular. And so anyway, all, all four of these are fat-soluble vitamins that can only be absorbed in your diet if they're eaten with a meal that have fat with it. So if you drink non-fat milk that has vitamin A and D added to it, you will have very inefficient absorption of those vitamins. Um, and if uh, you eat a cereal and put non-fat milk on it and the cereal has a whole bunch of these vitamins in it, you're not going to absorb those with the non-fat milk. And then the, 
The other thing to mention here, though, is if you eat liver, it's like a very powerful multivitamin. So if someone eats liver even just once a week, they can pretty much store up uh, plenty of these fat-soluble vitamins. In fact, they have to be careful not to overdose on vitamin A if they eat liver like several times a week, which is kind of fascinating.